All right, so that's the battery out of the Model Y. Looks like we got a bunch of mechanical rivets we're gonna have to drill out. The other pack, these were all bolts and just adhesive that held it together. Yeah, and this is a really dense sounding pack, so that top could be extremely difficult getting off of there. Once I got all the perimeter rivets spotted out, I was just able to get underneath the edge and cut that gray silicone with a knife and that got me to this lovely pink layer. The pink layer actually was so well stuck to the top of this, I ended up, this is my jib crane attached to the top. I have the battery clamped solid to my hoist, um, and that's the only way I could get this to move at all. So that battery is probably about 1,200 pounds, and you can see it lifting off the hoist there. That's how much force it was taken to get this top off. I did want to try to get this off in one piece, but I ended up having to cut all the seat brackets off this just to get it to flex enough to start coming up with the crane. And that is what we were left with, the glorious pink bubblegum mess. It looks as though they could just pour this stuff full once the battery's populated and it's just a low expansion foam. So they seal it all up and it just expands to fill the gaps and hardens into this rock solid piece. That's the PCB connection for the BMS coming up to the penthouse. Little green tube is a vent tube that I presume goes to the bottom of the cells. They did have this really cool foam down the side of it. It looks like an impact, um, some sort of impact resistant or at least give a protection to the side of the cells. Just to give you an idea of how stuck this top was, that shiny layer is actually the powder coat. So it's stuck so well, it pulled the powder coat off the steel of the top of the battery. Yeah, it just kind of filled every little nook and cranny there and it is 100% unserviceable. I can't even actually imagine end of life for this thing. How would you recycle this? This, this looks as though you just fully discharge it and run it through a shredder and pick the pieces up afterwards. There is, uh, there's no getting in there to fix anything or disassemble anything. So very cautiously and slowly got myself down to the next layer. Uh, this is a fiberglass separator plate between the top of the battery and the cells itself. Um, unfortunately, that pink stuff is weaved all the way through this. So that fiberglass layer was just as stuck as everything else. I really shouldn't speak so negatively about this pink stuff. As much as it's annoying on my end of it, it does its given job extremely well. This pack is structural because of this pink stuff. It got into every little nook and cranny and there, was, there is no flex in this pack. And I attribute that solely to this pink stuff. Again, a little bit irritating on my end, but nobody should be in here doing what I'm doing anyway and likely end of use, this is all just shredded up. Yeah, you can hear how rigid that is. I ended up using a scraper and a chisel to get it off the top of this fiberglass piece. So this fiberglass is just a separation plate between the cells itself and the battery. Directly underneath that is the collector plates. So those are the individual 4680 cells, and that's the current collectors sitting on top of them. But what I wanted to highlight here was a couple of different things. <clears throat> Number one, you can see how large that joint is on the top of those. So lots of surface area there. They got a really nice, uh, Really nice weld on the top of the cells. There's the positive button. The can is the negative connection, so you can see the positive and negative side by side there. 
Um, yeah, lots of surface area for a very good connection, so it can flow a fair amount more current than what the 2170 battery connections were. Um, those were just a little fuse wire. So you can see the uh, battery architecture here. I just want to go over this real quick for you. Um, when I metered this battery, I ended up getting a total voltage of 375.8. Uh, you can see my little cheat sheet here because I can't remember this stuff. And then I metered a bunch of these cells just to see how well balanced they were. Individual cell voltage came back at 4.085. So a little bit of math. 375.8 divided by 4.085 gives us 92, or almost exactly 92. So what that tells us is this is 92 series connections. And these, the layout of these current collectors, you can see this one I drew on for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In that current collector, nine positive connections together. And then that parallel connection goes to the next bank of nine batteries. So that gives us a 92S 9P battery architecture. Contrast that to the 2170 pack, that has 96S 46P. So curious, that leaves the peak voltage of the 2170 pack 16 volts higher than the 4680 pack. Um, I'm certainly that was probably done from a packaging standpoint on how the cells laid out in the pack. So that leaves us with 828 of these in the 4680 pack versus 4,416 2170s in the 75 kilowatt pack. That's a massive reduction from a manufacturing standpoint and a much simpler design for a battery. Very curious what uh, the future holds for an improvement on this design. Thank you very much for uh, following along. See you next time.